بالله العظيم من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك ولا الحمد يحي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فعليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين وأوصيكم نفسي بتقوى الله وقد أمرنا بالحق وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وَمَنْ يُطْعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدْ We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bearing witness that none has the right to be worshipped or unconditionally obeyed except for him. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. We ask Allah to send his peace and blessings upon him, the prophets and messengers that came before him, his family and companions that served alongside him and those that follow in his blessed path until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, this concept of muhasaba, this concept of holding oneself accountable is something that the Sahaba not only spoke about frequently, but they manifested in a very short period of time. And the ones that we speak about so frequently in the khutbas, in the Tuesday night classes, in the first, and in all of these different circumstances are people who were never satisfied with the current state that they were in. If there is one thing amongst many that you can say about the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, is that they were always looking for that next step with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's no secret subhanAllah that when you talk about the concept of al-muhasabah, this concept of holding yourself accountable, I would actually challenge people but not actually go through all of the quotes because of the time that we have to look at how many from Khulafa al-Rashidin, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them, our four Khulafa al-Rashidin, how many of them, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali, how many quotes exist from those four in particular about holding yourself accountable? Those four men who were guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their leadership and excelled in their personal lives as well as their leadership have the most quotes amongst the four of them about how to hold yourself accountable. In fact, you find from Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, the most famous statement in this regard, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. Hold yourselves accountable before you are held accountable. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where he mentions that the dunya is fleeing away from us and the akhirah is fast approaching. This world is fleeing from us and the hereafter is fast approaching and each one of them has their children. فَكُونُوا مِنْ أَبْنَاءِ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَكُونُوا مِنْ أَبْنَاءِ الدُّنْيَا Be from the children of the hereafter, not from the children of this world. فَإِنَّ الْيَوْمَ عَمَلٌ وَلَا حِسَابٌ وَغَدًا, عمل وغدا حِسَابٌ وَلَا عَمَلٌ Today is a day in which you act, but you are not held accountable. Tomorrow is a day in which you are held accountable, but you have no room to act whatsoever. So I wanted to talk about this concept of al-muhasaba, this concept of holding yourself accountable, but in a very specific context. Number one, what are the two main components of muhasaba? Number two, what's a practical way that we can actually carry out our daily scroll? You know, just like everything else in our deen, you cannot leave this to ambiguity or to a guessing game. You actually have to sit with yourself on a regular basis and classify what you have done of good and what you hope not to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with of evil. And you have to hold yourself to a higher standard. And one of the things that I want us to, inshallah ta'ala, focus on with the few moments that we have today is the intricate connection between a ni'am, between accounting for the blessings that Allah has provided to you and the sins that you respond with. There is a connection between the ni'am, the blessings that Allah gives to you, and your ability to sit down with yourself 
and to actually properly estimate the amount of blessings that Allah has provided to you and then the shame that that should bear inside of you from responding with ingratitude and every sin is a form of ingratitude. For today, of course, sins include many different definitions and involve many different components. But today, I want you to think of every single ma'asiyah, every single sin as a form of ingratitude. At the very least, it is not being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what He has given to you. And so when you sit yourself, with yourself, you weigh your blessings, you weigh your sins. And these are the two core components of muhasabah. What is the proof of that that we find? First and foremost, in Sayyidul Istighfar, in the chief dua to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with, أَبُوءُ لَكَ بِنِعْمَتِكَ عَلَيَّ وَأَبُوءُ بِذَنْبِ Or وَأَبُوءُ لَكَ بِذَنْبِ Both of them are authentic. I admit to you, the blessings you have provided to me, and I admit my sins. Because I cannot properly estimate my sins unless I properly estimate my blessings. And outside of the discussion of incentive, I cannot properly estimate the greatness of my seemingly small act of disobedience unless I properly estimate the greatness of the one that I am disobeying and sinning against. And that's why on the Day of Judgment, what is the crime? وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِي They did not give Allah His due estimation. They did not know how great Allah was. Therefore, their infractions that seemed very small, seemed smaller because they didn't know who they were sinning against. And of the greatest ways to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that practically yields something inside of you is through the blessings that He provides to you. And Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Ali Imran, وَعَصَيْتُم مِّن بَعْدِ مَا أَرَاكُم مَّا تُحِبُّونَ SubhanAllah, this is a rich tafsir. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala said, and you disobeyed after He gave you what you loved. After He gave you what you wanted. Allah provided for you exactly what you asked Him for. You made dua earnestly. You asked Allah for this, you asked Allah for that. Allah opened the doors of khair upon you. And you responded with disobedience. And of course, this is speaking about Bani Israel and in a specific concept, context, but it has a great meaning to it. And the ulama of tafsir, they reflect on this ayah. They say, Al ma'asiyatu ba'd al ni'ma ashaddu min al ma'asiyah qabla al ni'ma. To disobey Allah after He has given you something, after He's given you a blessing that you've been asking Him for or something that you love is worse in his sight than when you disobey him before he provides that thing for you. Not that sin is ever justified with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not that disobedience is ever not a problem because every disobedience is an act of ingratitude and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves all gratitude from us. Not that. But especially when Allah finds you in a state where he's giving you everything you're asking him for, and you're responding with things that he commanded you not to do. That makes it worse. And again, don't just think about Bani Israel. Think about yourself. So how do we bring this all together in a daily habit of muhasaba, in a daily habit of self-accountability? Shaykh Tahir Wair, hafizahullah ta'ala, he shared with us the statement from an Imam al-Mawardi, rahimahullah ta'ala, where he described al-muhasaba as the following. He said, أَن يَتَصَفَّحَ الْإِنسَانِ فِي اللَّيْلِ مَا صَدَرَ مِنْ أَفْعَالِ نَهَارِهِ That a person sits with himself at night and goes back and thinks about what they did during the day. A person sits with themselves at night and then goes back and thinks about what they did during the day. Now I want you to not answer this question because we're in Jum'ah, but at least in your head ask yourself this question. How many nights, as you're thinking about your computing, you know, what you earned for that day, you're thinking about what happened that day, you're thinking about what you've got to do tomorrow. How many nights do you actually sit with yourself for even a minute and go back and review the tape, review the script? What did I do that was displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today? What did I do that was good? What did I do that was bad? And then Mawardi rahimahullah says, so if it is good, then he commits himself to doing more of it. And if it is bad, then he seeks forgiveness from it, and he doesn't repeat it. Just ask yourself that question. 
How many nights do I lay in bed at night and I think, what did I do today that was ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that was an act of disobedience? Because let me tell you something. A person who is not introspective can find a way to make everything, even kaba'ir, even major sins, not that big of a deal. Because if the shaitan is your mufti, you're led astray. He'll make everything, texts fly out the window. The most severe warnings of the Prophet ﷺ mean nothing to you if you are not that introspective person. And yes, we find this constant emphasis in the Qur'an and the Sunnah to have people around you to stoke that proper conscience when you're not thinking right. We have that concept of the jama'ah, we have that concept of the group, we have that concept of Ahl al-Dhikr, of people of knowledge and people of remembrance that are meant to remind as well. We have all of that of surrounding yourself with good friends that will rub off on you and that will help your conscience be more alive. But at the end of the day, if you're not an introspective person, the most major sins will be justified away in your head. You'll take it all away. So what does a self-accountable person look like? And subhanAllah, I wanted this khutbah to be as practical as possible. I actually want you to leave with a simple assignment and inshallah ta'ala, I'll oblige myself with it and we can oblige ourselves as a community together and remind each other of it. One of the things, subhanAllah, that, that struck me when I was thinking about these words. If you take the afkar of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the morning, and you look at the afkar of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at night, the remembrance of the Messenger alayhi salatu wa sallam when he woke up in the morning, surrounded an attitude of gratitude, blessings, SubhanAllah, we live in a day and age where the Prophet ﷺ mentioned people will walk by a grave and they would wish to be in that grave even though we have more as a generation than anyone before us. Alhaakum wa takathur. You walk next to the grave and a person would wish to be in that grave. Not because they don't have anything but because they don't have perspective. They don't have perspective. And look at what the Prophet ﷺ teaches us. What's the first thing you thank Allah for in the morning? You thank Allah for being alive. Think about that. Forget about all the books that are out there right now. Think about your Prophet ﷺ, who's the most perfect of examples. If I've got nothing else to thank Allah for, and we have plenty to thank Allah for, but just hypothetically speaking, when I wake up in the morning, what's the first thing that comes out? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana ba'da ma amatana wa ilayhi nushur. You wake up and you say, Alhamdulillah, all praise and thanks and gratitude and glory is due to Allah who gave me life after death. Wow, I'm awake. Alhamdulillah. The first words out your mouth every morning are, Alhamdulillah, for the bare minimum blessing of being alive. I'm alive. Alhamdulillah. Do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By belittling the blessing of life upon you. You're alive. Alhamdulillah. You're here. Alhamdulillah. Don't for a moment show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in gratitude for the blessing of just being alive. And then the Prophet says what? Whoever wakes up and they've got a roof over their heads and they've got their food for the day and they've got their health. It is as if, it's as if that person owns the world. You're a king. You wake up with that mindset and you look around and you say, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, I have a roof over my head. I've got food for the day. I'm healthy. Alhamdulillah. You wake up with those blessings. And I want you to think about this dua from the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam. Qala alayhi salatu wassalam, Allahumma ma asbaha bi min ni'mah, awi ahadin min khalqik. فَمِنْكَ وَحْدَكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ فَلَكَ الْحَمْدُ وَلَكَ الشُّكْرِ Ya Allah, I have not awoken to any blessing. No blessing that I have. And no blessing that anyone else has. SubhanAllah, that in and of itself, by the way, is a cure for envy because when you look at what other people have and you think to yourself, why them, why not me? Why them, why not me? You're not recognizing the source of all blessings. You're not recognizing the source of all blessings. And so you wake up and you say, 
Every single blessing that I have and every single blessing that anybody else has is from you, Allah, alone. There is no partner to you. And to you belongs all praise and to you belongs all gratitude. In one narration, the Prophet ﷺ said that whoever wakes up and says this in the morning, فَقَدْ أَدَّى شُكْرَ يَوْمِهِ SubhanAllah, look how merciful Allah is. You have thanked Allah for that day. Really? The blessings haven't even started in your day yet. The blessing of walking outside, the blessing of your car starting, the blessing of your, your ability to move and to get from place to place, the blessing of that nice person that you came across, the blessing of you actually crossing that green light or the blessing of the red light that saved you from a tragedy, the blessing of your first sip of water, the blessing of your breakfast, the blessing of your lunch. It hasn't even started. But the Prophet ﷺ said, if you wake up in the morning and you say that dua, you have fulfilled your gratitude for the day because Allah is a shakur. Allah doesn't need much from you. Allah doesn't need anything from you. And Allah does not demand too much from you. Alhamdulillah. Now, if you look at the end of the day, because I said I want this to be practical, most of the afkar, most of the ad'i of the Prophet ﷺ are a review of the day. They're a review of the day. They're seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ad'iyat al-maghfirah, Sayyid al-istighfar, all of these different things. You're seeking forgiveness from Allah for what you have done throughout the day. Now here's what I want you to think about. Pick up any book about living a, a faithful and a happy life. Pick up any book about gratitude. And they'll all tell you, you wake up in the morning and if you wake up with that lens of gratitude, everything is going to be okay. Everything is great. When you wake up in the morning, you still have not accumulated the sins of the day. You still have not accumulated the sins of the day. So what I want you to do is when you wake up in the morning, just take two minutes, three minutes. And if you want to be good, five minutes. And sit there and count every ni'mah that you can think of for that morning. And if you start trying to count one blessing of Allah, you will not succeed. Just spend three to five minutes in the morning and think about every ni'mah that you have woken up to and say, Alhamdulillah, sincerely, gratefully from your heart, with full gratitude from your heart, Ya Allah, thank you for this. And then at night, dear brothers and sisters, when you lay down, spend three to five minutes and review every one of your conversations for the day. Review the backbiting. Review the slips of the tongue. Review the slips of the eye. Review the major and the minor, the public and the private. Review it all. Just spend a few moments and then put it in a bag of istighfar and send it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Rabbi khfirli. Ya Allah, I fell short today in this regard, in that regard. Get specific with yourself because you're not going to become a self-aware person unless you get specific with yourself. Ya Rabb, at that lunch conversation, I feel like I slipped. I went a little bit too far when talking about that person. And what is the connection of this all? I said every single disobedience is an ingratitude. And Imam Al-Qayyim Rahimahullah says, and every single sin is a misuse of one of Allah's blessings upon you. Every single sin is a misuse of a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah did not give you that tongue so you can backbite His creation. Allah did not give you that intelligence so you could scheme and deceive people. Allah did not give you those eyes so that you could look at the things He told you not to look at. Allah didn't give you that body so that you could use it in lust and sin. Allah gave you those blessings to use them for khayr, to use them for good. How dare you use those blessings for shar, for evil? And so the assignment is very simple. 10 minutes a day, wallahi it will change your life. 10 minutes a day, 5 minutes in the morning, take account of your blessings that you woke up to that day and say alhamdulillah for it. And recognize that none of those blessings are because of what you have earned, but because of what Allah has provided you out of His grace. 5 minutes at night, do it as a family, look back at your day and assess every conversation, every slip, every sin, and seek forgiveness from Al-Ghafoor, seek forgiveness from Al-Rahim from the one who is most merciful and most forgiving. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to use the blessings He has provided us with, all of our faculties, everything that He's given us in a way that's pleasing to Him until the very last moment that we breathe on this earth. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise us on the day of judgment amongst those that are completely forgiven for every single time they fell short. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enter us into Jannah for those with our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam without any form of punishment.
punishment and without any form of accountability. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum li sa'al muslimin fa astaghfiru unna wa al-ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والعاقبة للمتقين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب دعوات اللهم اغفر لنا ورحمنا واعف عنا ولا تعذبنا ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لا نكوننا من الخاسرين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لا نكوننا من الخاسرين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لا نكوننا من الخاسرين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في مشارك الأرض ومغاربها اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والكاذبين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا وإخواننا من بينهم سالمين عباد الله أن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على النعماء يزد لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة